Hi there. Welcome to my virtual classroom. My name is Esther Lessing and I'm from Business Analysis Excellence. I will be sharing with you a free training video today around analysis and analysis techniques. I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and see you in the classroom. Right, welcome back. So let's look at how to create a balanced scorecard. Okay, so let's have a look at the balanced scorecard as a concept. A balanced scorecard is essentially a way for us to help an organization, a business process, a business unit, or any group that's got a vision or strategy that they would like to realize. This is a way to help them do that by looking at different dimensions of their organizational process. So once we've looked at the dimensions, we will be setting very specific goals with them to help them have a particular active framework to work against and to measure their performance against. And that's essentially what the balanced scorecard does, is it provides us with four dimensions that we can use to help define these different goals and objectives. So if we look at an example metaphor here of managing a football team. So let's imagine we are the business consultants or the strategy consultants that's helping this team to bring their vision to life in the form of an active plan that they can follow. Looking at their vision um, and strategy, their vision is to be the best team with the best scores and they want to walk away at the end of the season with this amazing golden cup. So as a team, we know the goal is to be the best of the best by the end of the season. So let's have a look at what does the balanced scorecard then say we should consider in helping this team achieve this vision. As you can see, I've created a diagram for us here where we can have a look at the different dimensions of a balanced scorecard. Now, just before I jump into that, I just want to remind you that we are here to look at all the different dimensions and help to define performance measurement criteria in the format of objectives for this football team in order to achieve their vision. Okay, so now let's have a look at the, the specific dimensions we'll consider. We'll look at the business process dimension. For example, here we can say, do these sales processes work efficiently enough? And do we need to make some changes or do more or less of something so that they can achieve their vision? The second one, learning and growth dimension we need to look at. Here we look at things like, do we have all our team members on a training program? Do we have the best trainers training them? Um, do they have all their professional growth objectives met? If not, we need to set some specific objectives for that to happen. All of this again, with the vision and strategy in mind. Other factors to look at in this dimension would be innovation. Do we need to bring some new innovation into the team in order for us to achieve our vision and goal? And also you can look at corporate culture. Do we have a happy team? Do they work well together? Or are there some cultural things that we may need to improve on in order for us to achieve our vision? So those are the types of considerations when you set or help set objectives with specific measurement criteria for your team to implement. The next dimension we need to look at is the financial dimension. With the financial dimension, something has to pay for all of this. So do we need to set some specific objectives to perhaps raise more funds? Where do we get more finance, finances to help us achieve our vision? So it's really just about looking at the financial resources and perhaps the football team has enough. So you may just have one or two financial goals to in, include within your particular um, balanced scorecard. And then the other dimension, customer dimension, in this case, we will be specifically looking at, looking at our fans because they are the ones that's really funding us. They are the ones that will help us 
achieve our vision of being the best and for everybody to recognize that. So are we doing enough for our fans? Do we need to look at ways to get more fans? And anything related to our customers is what you would consider here in terms of objectives that you as a team might need to set if you want to achieve your vision. So in a nutshell, those are the different types of dimensions that's included within a balanced scorecard. There are overlapping things between the different dimensions. And I believe that this is really just there to help guide a nice holistic and comprehensive set of objectives for an organization or a team or any group that's got a particular vision that they would like to bring to life by implementing specific performance measurements and then to work against that. Right, so this is a bit of a practical example. Let's now jump into how do we actually set those objectives and what are the different types of objectives and measurements that we need to be able to do. Okay guys, so we've had a quick look at the different dimensions of the balanced scorecard. Now we will go and look at the nuts and bolts. So we'll look at some examples of how to set objectives for each of those balanced scorecards. So let's jump straight back in. Great, so let's have a look here. We've got the balanced scorecard objective setting as our next goal. However, what I would like you to just understand is that there are two different types of indicators that you can use when you start building your balanced scorecard objectives. First is the lagging, is called lagging indicators. These are the indicators that actually provides results of actions that's already been taken. So you're looking back at results. An example could be you've sold 100,000 tickets in the last season. So that's what we refer to as a lagging indicator. A leading indicator, this is when we look at information about what could be the performance or future performance. And an example in our context with the football team could be the fan base confidence percentage for the team to win the next game. So they might be 90% confident and we can measure that. So that's something about the future results that the team would be um, having. So these are just two concepts I wanted to make you aware of, keep it in the back of your mind when you start building your specific measurements for your balanced scorecard. Now let's have a look at the specifics. So we are taking each of the dimensions one by one, and we are going to be developing objectives, measures, targets, and initiatives. All right, so let's have a look at the learning and growth dimension and how we can build the objectives for that. Here we ask the key question, how will we sustain our ability to change and improve? And remember, keeping the vision and strategy in mind. So here we're looking at topics around training and learning, product and service innovation, and corporate culture. So here I have for the objectives as an example, to have best of breed professional football players. How do we measure this going forward? So this is one of our objectives that we need in order to achieve our vision, but how do we measure it? So the first metric could be the number of football players undertaking courses that we send them on. And another metric could be the football players achieving game milestone goals that we set. Then the targets that we set, so we've got the measurements, we know what we'll look at, but what are we actually aiming for? So this is the targets. So for the first metric, we're saying, we would like 85% of our football players to do the courses that we send them on annually. And for target two, we're saying that we want at least 80% of our football players to achieve the game milestones that we set. So how do we actually make all this happen? So what do we need to do in order for us to be able to measure these objectives? And that's where the initiatives come is, comes in. So here we're saying for the first metric and the first target, We've got one initiative that will run to help this 
And that would be promote the bonus football training workshops to the team. So that's one thing that we'll do to try and get to that target of having 85% people doing the training. And another initiative that we could do is to implement a milestone program where we set the specific milestones and we guide people to aim for those milestones. Now, keep in mind that the initiatives doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one match with your measures. You could have multiple initiatives that supports, supports one objective or one metric, or an initiative that supports multiple objectives across different dimensions. This, in this example, just for simplicity, I have made it a one-on-one -on -one kind of match. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's look at a quick last example for one of the other dimensions. So we look at the customer dimension. A typical question here, it's all about customer satisfaction. How should we appear to our customers? So it's about customer focus, satisfaction, and the delivery of value. So here, one of our objectives might be to achieve the reputation for being the number one football team in the country. That might be what we're aiming for. How do we know that we are the number one? We can have metrics such as customer feedback scores, and we could have a metric around the number of fan support messages that we receive per week. So a target could be that we have an average score of 9.5 out of 10 for our customer feedback. And the second target could be that we reply to 90% of all of our customer messages within two working days. And then the initiatives that we could run to help support these objectives and to meet those targets could be, for example, building or having a customer service center of excellence, implement that, and potentially doing some customer service industry training to make sure that we are communicating in the best possible way with our fans. So this is two sets of examples of objectives, measures, targets, and initiatives that I'd like you to just digest, have a think about, and use it as a framework for you to go and perhaps build your own balanced scorecard. So at the end, when you finish with your balanced scorecard, you will have a set of all of these objectives, measures, and targets, and initiatives that you've defined for each of the dimensions. You will also start to identify where there's some overlap. And in that way, you'll be able to merge some of these initiatives, um, measures, and targets. Hope all of this is coming together for you and that it's helping you and that it makes sense. But that's in a nutshell how you develop a balanced scorecard for a company or an organization, a group, or a process, or a business unit. Um, to help them achieve their vision in a practical, measurable way. Now, that's it for this technique. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and even subscribe because there will be many more videos coming in the weeks and months ahead. So I hope you'll enjoy and learn a lot from it. Thank you very much.